Hello and welcome to the Brian Scott Game. I'm Brian. Today, I've got a game called Ink Monsters. Ink Monsters is a 2 6 player set collection game by Daryl Andrews and Erica Bujoris, and will soon be published by Albino Dragon. In this game, players are collecting monsters to try to get the most points. Monsters can either have positive or negative point values, but they can also have a bonus for collecting monsters with certain characteristics. A unique draft mechanism is used to draft the cards. An ink pen moves around the circle of monsters in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Players use action cards to change where the pen ends up. So let's check it out, and I'll show you how to move the pen, how to draft your monsters, and how to collect set bonuses in Ink Monsters. To set up, place the direction marker into the center of the table, and then deal 12 of these monsters around the table. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, then take these cards, the blue ones, and deal three to each player. We're going to be playing a three-player game. Then take this and put it there. And then put the pen marker at the top. You are now ready to begin. All right, so on a player's turn, they can do one of two things. Either they can play one of these cards to move the pen or manip manipulate the cards, or they can just choose to take the one that it's already on. So I'm, I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to choose this uh, card and just take it. I chose to take it because it's straight up points and it has a bunch of attributes that I can use score points later. So this one has no abilities that I can use later, but it is worth a lot of points. So, set that off to the side. And now, the next player's turn. Now, before we go to the next player, this pen moves that way, so clockwise. So, um, this is also a really good card, so I'm just going to take it. And now we move again. So, I'm not quite sure if I like this card. So I could play this card and make it go one counterclockwise and take this one, which isn't that bad. Um, I could move it into any four. So there's this one. So that could be good. And then I could move it in front of a value one, which is the only one I'm at. I'm going to do this. So I move it over this way to there. I take this one and now it moves clockwise again. Now it's there. So since I played the card, I play it here and then I draw back up. Now, so this card has an ability and so does that one. So here are the attributes that you can score points for. So this, um, it's got a picture, it's got points, it's got attributes, a name, and then it has an ability or it doesn't have an ability. So this one is, you get one point for each monster with an arm. So this is an arm or a hand or whatever. That is it. This monster does not have one, an arm. No, this monster is, um, so this is, Erica Hayes. So this is um, one of the designers, and um, you get bonus three points if you're with Daryl. So the other um, designer, Daryl Andrews, is also in the game. So that's plus three points if at the end of the game you have four. So then, if I continue, so we can continue picking up cards and playing cards. So there's um, another type of card. It's this one. So you take the first three cards. This wouldn't be a very good move in this case, so um, I'm going to do it anyway just to show you. Take the first three monsters, shuffle them, and then put them back. So I take these first three monsters, shuffle them. So I'm taking a gamble on what I'm getting. So I'm not getting that one. Oh, I'm getting the ink spill. So ink spills are basically the worst cards you can get. So these ones are okay. I mean, you get Actually, this one's awesome for having ink spills. I'll explain that in a second. So ink spills are worth negative points for each one you have. So if I have two ink spills, negative four. If I have one, it's just negative one. So they're exponentially worse. This card is really cool because what it does is that ink, each ink spill is worth positive two instead of normal scoring. So this player is just gonna straight up take it because that is a really good card, and it stops him from getting it. So that's part of the strategy of the game, is stopping other players from getting cards that they want, need, or are good. So, so you continue playing until all of the cards are picked up. All right, so now each player has the monsters, so now um, you take all the monsters, and you can, um, I'm just moving them out of the way. Normally you'd kind of just move them off so people can kind of see them. So I'm just gonna move these out. And now, we play the second round by flipping the direction and then dealing out 12 new monsters from the monster deck. So, here we go. 
So now we take the pen and put it there, and we play another round. And now the pen auto moves that way. All right, so for example, it's this player's turn. I could use this card. So to use it, I turn it onto its side to use its bottom action. So its bottom action is, so this is, um, I get to keep it and use it when I want to. So move the pen clockwise one to three spaces. So I can move it here, here, here. So I don't have lots of eyes, so I don't want to get this guy. Um, this one's pretty cool. I do have a lot of different colors, so I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to move it two. So I turn him to his side, so now I can't use his action again. Then I get to take this. And now the pen goes that way. Play continues, players playing their cards, drawing cards, and gaining monsters until... Um, so we do this, um, all these are gone, and then we do it one more time the third round. And then at the very end, we count up points. So, so on these, they give points. So this one is negative one point for a person with scales. So that would be bad, and this one is positive one points for horns. So you want to collect the horns, and then at the end of the game, you add up all of the point values in the corners, and then you add up all the point values down in the descriptions, and then the player with the most points wins. That's how to play Ink Monsters. Okay, got my dad here for a parent's opinion. So dad, what do you think of Ink Monsters? I really liked Ink Monsters. The first thing that drew me in was the artwork. Mm -hmm. um, it looks awesome. Um, kind of reminiscent of Monsters, Inc. But this is Ink Monsters. But I like the drafting, I like the set collection, mm -hmm. had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I thought was really like, um, unique was you had these cards that controlled this pen that moved around, so you're controlling the thing that picks for you. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yep. So components, um, this is a prototype. I'm really hoping that they get like this really cool like actual pen <laughs> that has like some stand <laughs> and you move it. Maybe, we don't know. So we, we won't comment too much on the, on the components. Yeah. Although the cards were super nice. And they'll probably get nicer. So Artwork. I think the artwork is com complete, right? Because this is what, go-to at Kickstarter? Yep. So the ink, <laughs> ink. <laughs> the artwork <laughs> is done. Yep. Yeah, and like I said, that, that's initially what drew me in when I saw uh, the first Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought, hey, what is this? Ink Monsters. Uh, Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. And so yeah, it, it looks it looks awesome. It does. So strategy. Um, you've got um, some cards in your hand. It's move the pen forward three, or change the direction of the pen and move one or whatever. Yeah, and I think a lot of the strategy comes with the which monsters you pick. Well, the right, but I mean that's obvious. But the, <laughs> collecting the sets, but almost like making it so that your opponents don't get the cards that mm -hmm. they want. And that's a lot harder to do because you need to be paying attention to what everybody has. And after three rounds of this game, uh, there's, you have a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. So there's cards where it's like plus one point if you have plus one point for each hair, and it's negative four points. So it's not worth it if you don't have four or more. Yeah, hair. strategy wise, um, I think this one's good for little kids. Um, I, I played it a lot with the six-year-old. Um, he, wasn't, he wasn't getting a lot of the bonuses and upgrades, but he loved the draft mechanism and the collecting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, so yeah, it's easy for kids. I mean, we played it with him. So overall, it's a really great game. It's pretty solid. It's got um, co components are probably going to be great. Um, the artwork is just awesome. And then it's got strategy and it's easy for kids. So yeah, I mean, there's not a lot. The last time I, I played, I did feel like, well, this is kind of just like luck of the draw, right? Like, if, I mean, I guess if you didn't use your cards at all, it would just go around in a circle and you'd just pick up the cards as you dealt them out. Um, and that's not fun. No. But that's why you have the action cards. To skip, go forward, go backwards, to cancel somebody's actions. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the little nuances come into. But I still felt a little bit like I, I had less control um, and, and sometimes near the end of the game, when there's only like four cards, you really don't have any control. You just kind of get the, you know, get the yeah. crappy cards that nobody else wants. Um, All the good ones to get. But there is a cool fast. card that says skip a turn, which, you know, if you're forced to take a crappy card, you can skip a turn. Make the next person do it. Right. Yep. So, I, I like this one. Mm -hmm. Go back it. Ink Monsters. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Brian's Got Game. Please like us on our Facebook page. Send us a tweet at Brian's Got Game. Uh, 
visit our webpage, briansgotgame.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, I'm Brian's my dad, see you next time.